what's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about healthcare in the United Kingdom and how it works exactly. I'm actually very interested in learning about a healthcare system that is not our American healthcare system, which is infamously, we have insurance companies and fees and crippling debt, and it's really ran more like a, a business here than anything else. It, it's really disturbing, and there must be a better way. Perhaps the UK way of healthcare is the way. So I'm actually really, really interested to learn about this. So let's take a look here. We've done the United States, Canada, and France. None of them are really socialized healthcare systems. Mm. To get at that, we need to go look at a system like that of the UK. Okay. More specifically, the National Health Service of England is the topic of this week's healthcare triage. The National Health Service of England. At, like, I think I've heard of this. NHS? National Health Service? Um, and he also mentioned that the UK is the is like one of the only proper socialized healthcare in the United States. Somehow, the term socialized healthcare is some kind of like scary, dirty word. Um, let's get a proper definition of that. Socialized medicine is, by definition, a healthcare system in which the government owns and operates healthcare facilities and employs the healthcare professionals thus also paying for all healthcare services. <laughs> what a night, wow, what a nightmare. Oh no, please, anything but that. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, oh man, there's so much to say about the American healthcare system. Uh, so much to complain about. I mean, I will say that the actual care you get here, like when a doctor sees you, or a surgeon performs surgery on you, or, or you're given medicine, that's all good. The actual care is good. It's the it's the healthcare system, the insurance plans and the deductibles and the fees and the if you don't have the right coverage, you can't get certain you can't get certain healthcare things done to you or what you need and it's pretty crazy, honestly. <laughs> For somewhere like the United States, we kind of pride ourselves like being uh good at stuff and <laughs> and yet we have this healthcare system, which leaves a lot of people who are in situations of financial difficulty, like those are the ones that suffer the most. Uh, man. But this, this idea of socialized healthcare, where the government owns and operates healthcare facilities, employs the professionals, and pays for the services. To, in the UK, do you have to pay taxes? for the healthcare, like, or is it absolutely the government? I know there's a little distinction there. In America, we use the term free healthcare. Oh, in other parts of the world, they have free healthcare. Do people in the UK end up paying for it in taxes or, or something like that? I'm curious, but now I feel like I have an idea of where we're starting. The UK is one of the only proper socialized healthcare systems, okay. Okay. People like to throw around government-run healthcare as a phrase. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's a little hyperbolic. But in the case of England, it's actually pretty accurate. Oh. The National Health Service there provides care to everyone, all kinds of care. The system covers everyone who is ordinarily resident in the country. Basically, that means everyone except visitors and illegal immigrants. But even those... So, I mean, it, <laughs> I'm like frozen, like just listening to this, like... What? 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 What is this? Like that? What do you mean? Everyone just has health care. If you live, if you're a citizen and you're living in England, what? Do, what do you mean? Everyone just has health care. What? What do those words mean? I don't get it. That's that's the American in me coming to terms with the fact that it doesn't have to be the way that we have it here in America. I don't know. I I don't know why it is this way. Well, I think I do know. I think I do know. Maybe it's just a sad fact that at this point in the United States, there is companies and like pharmaceutical companies and hospitals and other, all sorts of people making so much money from the way we do our healthcare here. The, the healthcare insurance companies making so much money, so many people making so much money, they don't want that to change here in the United States. And I guess... 
for lack of a better word, it works. Even though it doesn't for a lot of people who can't afford the proper insurance plan or <laughs> they, 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 they don't get insurance coverage through their job. A lot of people depend on their job, like providing them with an insurance, insurance, healthcare insurance plan as part of a benefit package. Um, the fact that that is a thing, the fact that that's necessary for Americans to get health care is disturbing. I mean, health care is not one of those things you can decide on. It's not like, am I going to buy this loaf of bread? Am I going to buy some milk today? That's a choice. Health care, you need it. When you need it, you need it. That, I guess that's why I get so, so passionate about this. Groups can receive free care in emergency departments and for certain infectious diseases. Coverage is pretty broad. Wow. Preventive services, inpatient care, outpatient care, physicians, drugs, dental care, mental health care, palliative care, wow. rehabilitation, long-term <laughs> care, even some eye care. It's all covered. And it's pretty- Oh my god, it's, it's insane. Like, it's all covered. It's all available. To, to people in- I mean, he, he's talking about the NHS? Or, or something specifically in England? Is this England or is this all of the UK? I'm a little confused on that. But yeah, uh, either way, here in America, it's not that unheard of for people to turn down uh, a trip to the emergency room, to turn down an ambulance because of how much it costs. Seriously, I know people who have done that, said, no, 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 I'll drive myself. The ambulance is too expensive. And that's just, that's, a, that's sad. That's that's not not acceptable, honestly. Pretty much free to citizens once they've paid taxes. Almost. Oh, okay. He he's talking a little bit about taxes here. Is is that a part of the system? Care. It's all covered, and it's pretty much free to citizens once they've paid taxes. Yes. Almost everything I mentioned just a few seconds ago has no cost sharing whatsoever, with the exception of dentistry and outpatient drugs. Unbelievable. So it's all taken care of through taxes and. <laughs> Here in America, I feel like we don't even know where our taxes go. So I don't know why people, like, I don't know why we don't try to change this in America. For some reason, it's never really brought up. I feel like a lot of Americans would feel really good knowing that, hey, some of our taxes are going towards health care, and I don't have to worry about finding an insurance plan or if I'm inside of the proper system of coverage and my in-network or which hospital I have to go to, if it covers what I need. For, like, <laughs> get rid of all that and, and we'll just pay it in taxes. I don't know why any American would have a problem with that. I, I think this is very smart. The latter have a copay of just over seven and a half pounds. Inpatient drugs, on the other hand, are still free. And there are groups that are exempt even from outpatient drug copays. Wow. Kids under 16, no copays. Kids 16 to 18 who are still in school, no copays. If you're 60 or older, poor, pregnant, have had a baby in the last year, or have a number of chronic diseases, no copays. <laughs> oh my God, this is just making me feel bad. This is, I thought this was gonna be fun. I thought this was gonna be educational. This is just making me feel bad hearing about how it is in the UK compared to the United States. Uh, yeah, I mean, with, with everything, anything healthcare related in the United States, if you get, if you need to get drugs or if you need to visit uh, urgent care or an emergency room, you're gonna pay something out of pocket. Maybe you're gonna pay 20%. Maybe you're gonna pay a, a lump sum, a, a copay. You're gonna pay something every time. Um, it's just a matter of if it's $30,000 or $2,000 with the proper insurance plan. It turns out that only 6% of prescriptions actually incur the full copay in England. So out-of-pocket wow. costs in England are really, really low. Public expenditures cover more than 80% of all healthcare spending. About three quarters of that comes from general taxes, and most of the rest from a payroll tax. Huh. Over-the-counter drugs and other medical products account for another 10% or so of spending. The rest is mostly private hospital care for elective procedures. Ah. A lot of this is covered by voluntary health insurance. Most of it part of an employer-based benefit system. So basically- Oh, there is private health insurance or employer health insurance in the UK. Why? F is it for elective procedures or? That confuses me a bit. By voluntary health insurance. Most of it part of an employer-based benefit system. So voluntary health insurance. That's a, I've never even heard of that. 
in America, it like you, you need to have health insurance. You are in a lot. <laughs> you are in trouble. Like seriously, like trouble. If you don't have health insurance, you you better pray you don't have to go in like for some. <laughs> you better pray nothing happens to you, because um, that's when you can actually get into massive life changing like crippling bankruptcy and debt is if you don't have a health insurance plan. Basically, about 10 to 11 percent of the population has private supplemental insurance. Huh. Two private insurers cover about two thirds of all of those people. People okay. are required to register with general practitioners who deliver the vast majority of primary care. Most GPs work under a national contract with the government wow. and are paid through capitated services. A bit of so the hospitals and doctors are like on the government's payroll. That's interesting. And, and that's all paid through taxes. You know, I, this, you know, the details I might not get spot on here, but I, this is basically what I understand. And, uh, that makes all the sense in the world. I mean, here in the United States, um, a lot of hospitals are, are self-owned. They're like businesses. Uh, doctors are basically <laughs> incentivized to try to earn as much money as possible. Um, which is not a comfortable feeling when you're going into a place where you feel like they're tr almost trying to make money off of you. Um, and even if it's indirectly by having your insurance coverage pay them a lot of money, that's a whole thing. And it's bizarre. It's bizarre to even think about. It it's strange that it's so normalized here in America when I think about it out loud like this fee for service and bonuses for good performance but unlike most other countries gps actually work for the government as do mm. specialists almost all of them are salaried at hospitals run by the nhs patients have more of an ability to choose not only which hospitals they'd like to go to but also which specialists they'd like to see in those hospitals than they have in the past wow i mean it makes sense honestly when you think about it like what what is the government's purpose in life let's get a little philosophical here the government's purpose is, you know, at its core to serve the people, take care of the people. That's why you make a government to keep peace and other things like you could very, very reasonably say one of their purposes is to provide health care for all its citizens uh, through taxes. That makes so much sense. That makes like too much sense. When I, I don't understand how America got to where it is right now with the private uh, health care and private health care insurance and all that. Wow. About half of specialists treat some private patients in private hospitals as well. Publicly owned hospitals are run by NHS trusts. Mm. They're paid for care at nationally negotiated diagnosis related group rates or DRG rates. Okay. Some care is purchased through the private sector, especially for mental health and elective care. Finally, okay. the NHS pays for long term care, although less today than it used to. Those who make less than 23,250 pounds are entitled to free state-funded residential care. Hmm. Most residential care is paid for by the private sector, though. Okay, so he, he's covering a couple things that are not paid for by the NHS to everyone. Not everyone is entitled to certain health care coverage, like residential care and long-term care. Okay. End-of-life palliative care, however, is provided by the NHS in hospices, homes, or even hospitals. Wow. What's great about the NHS? It's cheap. In 2011, <laughs> Oh, this is how he knows how to get to me. This is how he knows how to get right to my core. Uh, it's <laughs> saying the C word. Oh, you know what's great about UK healthcare? You, you little American watching this? It's cheap! <laughs> While well, I'm out here. Going, just thinking about how expensive ours is. Oh. Hospitals. What's great about the NHS? It's cheap. In 2011, England spent about 9.4% of GDP on healthcare, okay. compared to the OECD average of 9.3%, and the United States, 17.7%. They spent $3,405 on healthcare per person, which is just above the OECD. Yeah, that's interesting, because the only healthcare the United States government uh, is, is spending money on is really like Medicaid, um, government provided healthcare coverage to people in the United States who make a really, really low income. So thankfully there is a way for people with really low income in the United States 
to apply for free health care. It's called Medicaid. Um, so I, maybe that, <laughs> I don't know. I'm really grasping at straws here, but I guess that's something, something. I don't know how good the coverage in that whole package is. Uh, luckily, I've never needed to, to have that. I've always had health insurance like through my job, through my employer, which is what the vast of majority of Americans really depend on. Because uh, even that will cost you one or two hundred dollars a month out of your your paycheck but going to private health insurance which a lot of americans do outside their job if your job doesn't provide it that kind of health private health insurance plan can cost you three hundred dollars a month four hundred five hundred easy easily depending on the coverage you need i mean i i know people who have had up to like eight hundred a month um, for for health care if, if they really need if they really need good coverage yeah. the OECD average but that three thousand four hundred and five dollars is only forty percent of the more than eighty five hundred dollars per person spent in the US the number wow. of physicians per 1,000 population at 2.8 is lower than the OECD average of 3.2 but above the United States 2.5 which huh. means they have more doctors than we do Wow whoa what really? Number of physicians per 1,000 people. What an interesting statistic. The UK, um, it doesn't even matter how big our populations are. This is just per 1,000 people. The UK has more doctors. More, like, so people are getting theoretically seen a little faster. Wow. Okay. And the average is 3.2. Okay. Two, but above the United States 2.5, which means they have more doctors than we do. Wow. They produce higher than average numbers of medical graduates as well. Life wow. expectancy at birth is 81.1 years, above the OECD average. Mortality from cardiovascular disease is similarly better than average. Cancer mortality is below average, though it's worth acknowledging there have been better than average improvements in the last decade or so. Okay. Infant mortality rates are low, as are suicide rates. So it seems like in general, this healthcare system benefits the population of the UK. They are, for most things, below average or doing better than average, like in life expectancy and mortality rates of certain things. Is that's all very good signs supporting the UK healthcare system. Just saying. Diabetes prevalence is low in spite of the English diet. I'd be shocked, like, to hear the stats for America because, literally, even if you have healthcare insurance. Uh, depending on your illness, I mean, you're still going to pay a lot of money. And a lot of Americans even feel like they don't want to go get health care treatment out of fear of what the cost could be. And that right there is the whole pro that the fact that that is a thought in American minds is horrible, horrible, horrible. The percentage of adults who report being in good health is well above average. Mm -hmm. And they do this on a shoestring. Imagine if we in the United States spent 40% of what we do right now on healthcare. We'd have an extra like $1.6 trillion or more to play around with. We could massively increase spending on tons of other programs and still... I mean, when you put it like that, uh... There's so many reasons why I truly, truly don't understand why the American healthcare system is the way it is. The only way I can understand it is that there's people making so much money off of it in America and they have enough power and that they don't want it to change. And the institutions in power that make money off American healthcare don't want it to change. And... That's probably the number one reason, because I don't think any logical person would argue against the fact that our healthcare system is is terrible, uh, <laughs> terrible, especially when you learn about healthcare systems like the UK. Still have a surplus. There are downsides. In order to keep oh. spending so low, the NHS makes certain decisions other countries might find unpalatable. Some drugs are unavailable. Technology oh. is nowhere near as prevalent as in other countries. Oh. Hospital beds are even scarcer than in the United States. Physicians and nurses... Oh, I, I'm glad he's talking about this at least, because no system is perfect. So even he, he's... At the end of the video here, he's, he's talking about some of maybe the criticisms of the UK healthcare system, but it seems like the benefits far outweigh 
the bad. <laughs> Nurses work pretty hard. Hospitals aren't geared towards personal comfort and can be overcrowded, understaffed, and sometimes even dirty from what I hear. Okay. Waiting times can be longer than in other countries. Okay. And on many metrics of quality, the UK falls below where they would like to be. There were Okay. I mean, that is one that is probably the best thing about American healthcare is that when you go, um <laughs> it's usually not very long waiting time, probably cuz a lot of people don't want to go. So when you go, you're seen quickly and the care, the quality of care, since you're paying for it, the quality of care is very good. It's, it's, it's typically very, very good. Um, and, and the people working there are typically very, very good. So that is like the comforting thing. Maybe why our whole system isn't plunged into chaos is because we do have good healthcare services. Working to try to fix some of this. They've tried to increase patients' abilities to make choices. Providers mm -hmm. are given more incentives to improve quality. Transparency and accountability are increasing. But as with almost all of these episodes, it's important to remember that Britain is a free and democratic nation. They chose the NHS, mm. and they do so again and again. They love their healthcare system. And oh, that's interesting. I never think of it like that. Uh, is this like a, it's a basically a government policy, something the people of the UK have voted for, is the NHS, this system of healthcare. And it continues to, the people continue to keep it. I don't, <laughs> here in the United States, who are not voting on any kind of healthcare policies, or um, from time to time, different presidents and stuff and try to, to vote or push through certain bills and le legislation on universal health care or at least health care coverage for people in financial need. That's like the maybe the one thing from time to time that gets talked about. And even elected officials from the Conservative Party support it. There are trade-offs wow. to health care systems, as there are with so many things in medicine. It's easy to demonize socialized medicine for its shortcomings. Mm. We can't ignore its financial benefits, though. Yeah. The NHS may not always be the best, but it certainly can lay claim to being efficient. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. NHS. I had heard that term before. Never really learned in detail about it. Or UK healthcare in general. So this was actually fascinating. A little disheartening as well. Uh, but <laughs> this was by Healthcare Triage. And I got to give it a like. That was very good. Very interesting. And pretty eye-opening, honestly. Learning about a healthcare system that's different to the American healthcare system. I think a lot of Americans just like, we, we get caught in this uh, thought process of, well, it's the way it is. That's just the way. It is what it is. Our system is the system. And, the, and there's no other way. Whatever. Like... There are other ways, uh, and there's ways in which we, <laughs> I think a lot more Americans could afford health care or not even afford, but uh, not have to worry. That's one of the biggest things as an American with the whole health care system here. This idea that you have to worry about your health care and if it's covered and what the bill is going to be, that's like a unique anxiety and fear that is just so silly and, and ridiculous to exist uh, in our country and with something as important as healthcare, and yet it does. So uh, there you go. I, I thought this video was really interesting, very enlightening, thought-provoking. Maybe a little sad for me to learn about, um, but good, but good. It's good, I think, to, to learn about these things and question the way we do things here, and, and it's all good to talk about. So I, I enjoyed it for that reason. So anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment, perhaps with your thoughts on healthcare in the UK. If there's something I got wrong or didn't understand correctly or what you think about healthcare in the UK versus the United States and any of that would be very fascinating to hear about. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to the UK, and UK culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.